right. All right, indeed. Welcome to the podcast, Appetite for Distortion. It is Brando, episode 201. Welcome. As the, I guess it's still the sub series of Feel, Feel My Quarantine in my apartment in Queens. <laughs> um, it's just been a, a crazy time in the world, which is a, an understatement, but uh, I really appreciate everybody who's been hanging out in the, on the podcast and reaching out to me and uh, as and, and people who congratulated me on, on the milestone of, of 200 episodes to talk about Guns N' Roses. <laughs> <laughs> But I couldn't have gotten this far if it was just about, I mean, yes, it's about GNR, but we use our six degrees of GNR bacon to talk about everything in the world, as long as it relates to GNR. That's the, uh, the North Star that we follow. So it's taken us to some fun places, and, and honestly, it's got to take us to some serious places. Um, many of you have reached out to me, and it means a lot that, you know, for me, when I talk about mental health and I talk about depression, I'm very open about my experiences. Because to me, that's that goes along with being a Guns N' Roses fan. How can you kind of be a, a mentally stable Guns N' Roses fan? So I, I know there's more people like me out there. So to, uh, today for this episode, we're going to talk about something uh, I think it might even be harder uh, to for me to speak of. And I, I hope I do a good job. I, I hope uh, I learn something. I'm going to have to keep saying I because I kind of feel my viewpoint may represent a lot of other people. So today, a friend of the show, um, honestly, out of like the 200 episodes that we've done, I've often cite Roberta Freeman as one of my favorite guests. Because you were so nice the first time around. You were just very, you know, in my head, I keep thinking like, oh, with us is Tracy and Roberta. That's what I grew up with, you know. And then you're just so this, this down-to-earth, um, salt-of-the-earth person and uh, to learn about you. and um, So I appreciate you coming on again. I think the last time was... One of the cooler things I think I've done with the show, uh, you were like interviewing Teddy Zigzag with me, which was <laughs> fun. fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, well, I guess the first thing I got to ask, like, how are you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm assuming you're you're locked up like the rest of us. Yeah, I, I'm under lock and key. It's crazy, you know. First of all, first and foremost, you know, the quarantine has like changed lives, you know. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's, it's really scary. It's really tumultuous times. And, um, you know, I'm not 20 years old anymore. So like, I'm, you know, I'm worried more about the virus than, you know, the kids that are partying in, you know, the, on the Florida beaches and stuff. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I think about it. I think about every time I bring home groceries, I try to limit my grocery shopping when I do. I sanitize everything that comes into the house. And, you know, my, my boyfriend thinks I'm crazy a little bit, you know, but, I, you know, I don't want to get sick. I don't need uh, to get sick. <laughs> I know? get it. My girlfriend yeah. does the, the food shopping because it's just physically easier for her to do it. And mm -hmm. what they do now with bagels, of course, I got to have my bagels. Yeah. They, yeah. they wrap them individually. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're not just out there and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm wiping off and cleaning the wrapping of a bagel. That's right. What world is this? I'm cleaning I a bagel know. before I eat it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, but, um, I'm glad because you seem to be doing well regardless, but where should have you, uh, what, what were, what were your plans for the summer? Where should you be right now? Well, I was, I had a lot of works, uh, set up, you know, I was, I was working with, with this, um, band called Think EXP, which is, um, like with Scott Page from uh, Pink Floyd and Norwood Fisher from um, uh, um, Fishbone and, you know, people like Tony Franklin and uh, who, who's worked with Gilmore and Kate Bush and Kenny Olsen, who's, who's, who's worked with Kid Rock. And like, it's kind of like this all-star band and, and we kind of do our own take on Pink Floyd, you know? That's cool. And um, so I've, I've had a lot of dates canceled with them. You know, I was supposed to go to the New Orleans Jazz Festival that got canceled. Mm. Um, you know, we have shows. We did Budapest last year and we, we were planning on kind of doing it this year. And then that like got on, put on hold. And, and I just have like a lot of gigs with other people. And, you know, it's just, it's, it's, life has changed. 
you know i'm still getting calls to do work but it's always tentative sure. and it's always like yeah for next year 2021 the next summer of 2021 so it's like oh my god you know so it's very stressful for me um it's stressful for me not to be regularly singing um you know i try to sing at home as much as possible but it's I, I, singing is my happy place and, mm. and I'm having a hard time finding a happy place right now, you know, cause you know, the whole quarantine thing is, is rough when you, especially when you're living with people, as you probably know. Sure. Uh, I'm, I was just taking like a nap in the other room while my girlfriend used the living room to teach tap dancing. Via right. Zoom. Yeah. So it's, uh... <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's Thanks. a lot of sacrifices you have to make to, uh, in order to live, um, uh, you know, harmoniously, you know? Sure. So you know, especially my studios in the living room. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, uh, it's crazy. So yeah. how are you staying? I know you said you're, you're trying to sing, but what are you doing to stay creative? I mean, I'm very fortunate that I've been able to still do this podcast. And if it wasn't for this podcast, I think I would be going nuts. I, I, I've said that. And that's, that's the truth. You know, I, I can watch, I don't know how many times I can watch the office. I'm not sick of it yet. <laughs> <laughs> but it's that's like all I do other than the podcast. So right. how are you staying creative? Are you yeah. whether it be um, hobbies or singing related? Well, yeah, I mean I haven't I'm not as te- I'm not confident in uh being uh you know, I'm not tech savvy, so I'm not confident to like do streams like some of my other friends are doing. Okay. You know, on like Facebook and stuff. And I want to start doing that. I want to start singing regularly on, on Facebook, but it's, it's, it's frustrating for me because I'm not tech savvy and I'm trying to learn a little bit more before I actually put myself out there. Um, um, but uh, I, I, I have this kind of side gig that I've been, think, you know, been working on where I have created a very small line. It's the very beginning. It's a very small line of jewelry, uh, mostly earrings, um, that's created basically for singers and and female musicians because um, I have this thing about you know I'm, I'm all of my friends who are singers have this oh you can't hear me oh no can you hear me now Brenda technical difficulty I think it's something on your end because can you hear me no yeah I do now see that's the tech savvy thing I, yeah. I- that's the tech savvy thing that we're talking yeah. about. But you, you have a lot. You said you have a lot of wires going on there. So oh, I have a ton of wires going on. Yeah, I mean, I try to keep them neat, but yeah. Uh, yeah. So I don't. I don't have very many wires, so I haven't touched anything. So it can't be me. You know what? Since that happens, because mm-hmm. now it said like the entire session may not be recorded. Oh, you think? That's what it you just said. Recording. Okay. It's still just recording. All right. Well, yeah. then it'll just be like one of those, you know, uh, I'll, I'll edit it out of the podcast version. Yeah. I'll, we'll leave it in the awkward. Uh, yeah. Uh, I'm, sure you could, I, I'm sure you could do some editing if you, if you need to. I'll figure something out. I'll figure something <laughs> out. You know, it's appropriate. We were, that, we were on topic. I was showing you yeah. an example of, even though my, my title is technical producer for iHeart, I'm not as technical as I should be. Yeah, well. <laughs> Anyway. I think we're learning a lot about ourselves during this time, you know? Uh, I, I know. And that's the topic that we're going to go to. But, but I, I just want you to finish your, uh, oh. you're telling me about your. Okay. Well, my little creative shtick on the side is, is just that I create these earrings that are, they look really heavy and blingy and they're blinged out. They look like big, like stones and, you know, rhinestones and glitter. And they're really, they're really sh- Like you could see them from, you know, two football stadiums away they're really you know rock and roll looking but they're super light like they don't they don't weigh down on your ears because after you know a two hour three hour concert your ears the first thing you do after show after i after show for me is i take out my in-ears and i take off my earrings because my Hmm. ears are telling me so anyway i'm creating a line you know all right that's cool you know keep keep us keep us posted i've um well i have uh, the late, I guess anybody can wear earrings. I mean, I, uh, I have mine, but I don't know if I can pull off the dangling ones. I guess I have to, you know, the short. I should be shirts. wearing my earrings right now. I just feel stupid that I'm not like wearing any. Oh yeah. You got to, uh, represent. I got to represent. Oh my God. Hold on. I'm like right by my, here, wait. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna have to show you. Okay. Like no, I, I want to see. Assuming if the, assuming the zoom works. <laughs> uh, oh my god. Okay. Well, so wait a second. Yeah. No problem. Uh, what are they made out of, by the way? Because uh, well, we are my girlfriend wore. She said she wore a earring for the longest time, and then now they just make her break out. So no. Oh uh, yeah. Well, these well these have been like worn, and they're all nasty right now. Okay. But like, yeah, there's like material stuck to them but like like these these are made out of wood really lightweight wood oh okay right? and then this is made out of felt can you see these i do oh that looks like a and they look really heavy and big right that looks like a combination cookie planet that's like, <laughs> that's like a planet cookie so this is oh, it's like a sparkly it's like a sparkly cookie i like it I might these just are get a little heavier well those are but cool it's like uh Bobbles. With, with yeah, like ball, like pearl balls. That's what yeah. they look. I know that that sounds weird how I'm explaining no, it. No. Oh, those are very nice. So good. I'm and glad that you're sting. I know it's not uh, maybe your your favorite. You know what you you make your your livelihood off of, but you're still right. Yeah, like, I mean, it, thing to keep you busy. I was an artist artist before I became a professional singer. I went to art school because I I thought I was going to pursue a career in art, even though I always knew when I was going to be a singer but I kind of followed in my sister's footsteps going out going to high school and I used to I paint I, I sculpt I you know I create I loved creating with my hands as well as creating with my voice so that's sure. you know, just another way of creating this is the time to do it maybe this yeah. is the perfect segue into being yeah. creative and to what we want to talk about and yeah you know uh, Obviously, I, I try to make this podcast an, an escape, uh, not just for myself, but for everybody. You know, we're just talking about Guns N' Roses. You know, it's a, it's a band that we love. We're talking about music. Uh, but sometimes that, that band, and one of the reasons why I gravitated towards them when I was a kid and became a sexual fan and why I think it's, it's work as a podcast, because it's not just like their, their kiss, that they mm -hmm. kind of just talk about women and partying like they they're as they they talk about all gamut gamuts of of emotion and things that are going on in the world when axel does tweet it's usually political mm -hmm. um saint duff is very uh outspoken politically and, and with causes slashes mm -hmm. so it, it, obviously i don't need to go into detail what's going on not just in america but in the entire world with uh, with black lives matter because uh, the guns are wrote their 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 social media also this was last Tuesday as we we're recording this when it was um, the show must be paused. It first started with the music industry mm -hmm. and just not just taking a day off to reflect and and to show your solidarity. And Guns N' Roses social media put up uh, everyone put up by a black I guess right. a black box. Mm -hmm. I kind of found it silly those people who. Uh, kind of criticize like oh what does a black box do right well they it's don't a, understand what the meaning meaning behind it is it's an acknowledgement it's, it's an, also it's it's like not giving your business to to that you know to the music industry like not spending money not 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 just a moment of silence you know a day of silence sure. you know? and it, it was nice to see it expand to everybody mm -hmm. because i think everybody wanted to take part of right. that that movement which has been you know obviously what what started out as i don't even know how to say start out because this isn't just a current problem this is a problem since uh you know, the planet thousands, started well it's thousands of years old but like in america it's it's you know a few hundred years old well not a few because we're not a few hundred years old yet but um yeah it's 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 been going on since the beginning of 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 america you know when christopher columbus said he discovered america and there were already people here and he decided to like steal from them and spread disease and kill them and slaughter them and take their land. And, and that's where it's, that's where it started here. You know, I know with Columbus and then, you know, Thanksgiving day, it's Thanksgiving. It's always awkward when you learn about what right. really happened and not what you learned in, in, in school right. uh, here in the States. It's just, it's very, it's awkward. So, 
it's it's yeah. more than awkward. It's disgusting that we were taught this in in school, and and you know we you know as innocent children we thought Thanksgiving was oh well, you know I mean the the concept of giving thanks is a beautiful concept, but right. you know when you think of what it's based on, you know with the lie of of how the Indians sat down with the pilgrims and you know they they became you know this one big happy family. There's nothing further from the truth, you know. That did not happen at all. And, you know, we're basically celebrating Christopher Columbus and, and his discoveries and, and, you know, the slaughter of the Native American people. And it's a disgrace that it's not taught in, taught in the schools what really happened, you know. And there are a lot of historical things that happen towards a lot of different ethnicities, sexual orientations, there's a lot of different groups. Mm -hmm. And that's what's uh, also I want to get across when we say Black Lives Matter. It has nothing to do with uh, saying in, uh, any other life is less than Black. Right. It's right. just say, hey, this is a problem. We're highlighting this problem. We need right. to understand. If I saying and, save the dolphins or save the whales, it doesn't mean that we should, that, that turtles' nope. lives don't matter or whatever. Exactly. It means that right now, the Black and Brown people of this of this country are are finally you know it's it's being acknowledged that this this racism has gone on for a long time and you know we're done we're tired of it and, and things really need to change now you know we we had major changes in the 60s but it's time for the next step because people who say that there's no such thing as racism don't see or maybe they're a little racist themselves for saying that or thinking that or but. just not aware of it. And, you know, obviously I thought about it. I was like, is this something I'm just going to address more than just on social media? Cause on, on the AFD shows, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, whatever I put up the, you know, black box and, and it was, it was fine, you know, but I, it, I have a podcast. It's not just right. social media. So what can I do instead of just, yes, I acknowledge it. You know, um, I've talked to you off air about some of the things that I struggle with, uh, which I will talk about uh, here as well, because I think, again, my, my thought process, even though I feel I know I've evolved, I, a lot of people can relate to it. And I don't want to come off as a holier than thou. Right. You know, I, I, I'm, I'm flawed. I'm absolutely, you know, everyone is flawed. Well, you know. <laughs> that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's uh, the error is, is the human or the, I forget the exact quote. I was trying to sound smart. The error is human to forgive is divine. There you go. There you go. <laughs> you know exactly what I was saying. Yeah. So uh, I just figured it's, it's important to talk about because it's, it's not even before this most recent incident, you know, whenever Axel would speak out on Twitter and someone who does a GNR podcast and, you know, kind of just to, I don't know him personally, obviously, unlike, you know, you knew him personally. But for someone who looks at him as a, at a far, I know he's flawed as well. Mm -hmm. But people would always say, or even with Slash or Duff, when they would say something, they would bring up the song One in a Million. Right. And I remember listening to that song when I was younger. And obviously the, the language caught me a bit by surprise you know, by the time when I was, I forget when I, I, I because I, when Appetite came out, I was way too young. So I, whenever I found lies, you know, I, I was still pretty, I was still pretty young, but I, looked at it as not a at that time as just like this is like a, a a tom sawyer kind of book you know he has to use the you know, and oh by the way i should preface it with everything i i personally i'm not going to say the word i'm not saying the n-word because that's uh not just because roberta's here that's just like I, it's it makes me uncomfortable you know you we were talking about it again we were on the phone the other day for an hour yeah and you you would you can say it comfortable too and uh, you know? and uh, it, i'm glad you said though roberta you're like when i get uncomfortable you're like i start stuttering and i'm uh, like me too yeah so it's so people understand it's a uh, yeah I'm, I'm, a, I'm a professional radio guy but i may stutter a little bit this episode <laughs> because it's a difficult <laughs> yeah uh, difficult topic it's, it's yeah but it's a very difficult topic i i brought it up to to ernie c from body count because I love how outspoken he is. And of course, Ice T. Ice T for president. He mm -hmm. is the coolest guy. And I just love following him on Twitter. 
So obviously they've been, I mean, since they started body count, this is what they've been talking about. There goes the neighborhood. And mm-hmm. I mean, these are, it's, it's amazing. All these bands like Rage Against the Machine or Public Enemy that's been talking about this for so long. It's still happening. Right. So I asked Ernie C about it because body count did some shows with them. And one in a million was out by that time. And they were getting slack from Living Color. And Ernie, he said, yeah, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, of course, but he's like, Axel is not that dude. Meaning that he's not, he never treated me different. You know, he treated me like, you know, he was, he had nothing but wonderful experiences with him. He's like, mm-hmm. it's just lyrics, certain lyrics, you know, you have to try to get across a certain point. He didn't seem to be offended by it. And even if he was, was or wasn't, that's, that's his point of view. I just mm-hmm. wanted to hear it. I'm just curious. Right. So I, I asked you, when I first reached out to you to do this episode, uh, I asked in you the same thing because I just wanted to have an organic conversation to see what comes of it and because you, you asked me for specific questions, which I usually, sometimes I have, sometimes I don't. But yeah. one in a million seems to be the most obvious thing to talk about. Uh, so did you have, that song was obviously already out by the time you, when you were touring with them. Uh, I guess your, your introduction to that song, what you think about it, I, I guess... Um, yeah, I would, I would want to know your point of view on the GNR song, One in a Million. Okay, well, first of all, I have to say that, you know, I think that I, I'm glad that you, you want to speak about this because it's a really uncomfortable subject for, I guess, anybody associated with GNR and um, including the band mates and also, you know, I don't I'm I don't remember talking to Tracy about it but I think at the time we both kind of agreed cuz I don't know I think she was more of a GNR fan than I was cuz I I mean I had seen like Welcome to the Jungle on MTV and stuff like that um but I wasn't like a fan you know and I understand. And I, I got called to do the gig um I was like, yeah, okay. You know, I had, I had already done, I was getting off with the, a tour with Cinderella and I was like, yeah, let me go on the road with them, you know? And from what I learned to hang out with Slash and didn't get any racist vibe or anything, um, I think it's, it's really important to talk about this because it, it's so controversial. And at the time I didn't, Maybe it was my ignorance or my, I was so young and, you know, I was just like, oh, rock and roll, you know, I just, I, I, and because I didn't know the song, you know, I wasn't really introduced to the song. I had heard fans or non-fans say, aren't they racist? And I'm like, no, but, and, and people would say, how about that song? And be like, what song, (laughs) you know? So that's my bad, you know, it's like, that is my mistake and my ignorance of not researching you know, the band before I started working for them. Um, however, you know, at the time, I think, you know, I probably had the same reaction that you did where I thought he was, Axel was speaking from the point of view of racist America. Right. And that's how, you know, middle America, racist America, whatever, thinks. And, and he was just thinking out loud, you know, and and especially because I never got a, a personally a racist vibe from Axel. He was always super, not only like super sweet and kind to me, but he was very respectful. Like, you know, he wasn't like the other guys where the other guys would cuss in front of us and be vulgar and, you know, just be rock and roll, you know? And Axel was really like, he would never cuss in front of me. He would always address me properly. He was... Hmm very, very sweet to me. And so that being said, you know, I was, I, I I guess I, I couldn't let myself believe that those lyrics meant that he thought I was a nigger. I almost said it. (laughs) (laughs) That he thought I was what he said in the, in the, in the lyrics, you know, the N word. And, um, I remember one particular thing that, you know, I, I don't, I've never said this in an interview before because, you know, it could keep me from work, from getting work for saying this. Um, But I think now is the time to speak out against injustice. And at the time, 
we were on tour with Metallica and James and Slash and Axel, they were talking. I remember passing them in, uh, I don't remember where it was, but it was some outdoor venue and, and they were in an area and I had to pass them to get to my dressing room. And I heard James say about Ice-T because Ice-T was supposed, supposed to join us on the tour. He said, I don't want to share my stage with a N word. And I was like, what did he say? You know, like I couldn't believe my ears. And um, Axel, you know, was just like, you know, it's my show. And I, you know, I don't remember what he said. I, re I mean, it was such a long time ago. And I, and I was, I think my whole brain was clouded with such anger that I just kind of blacked out. You know, I just saw red. I understand that. And did he say he that? Said, yeah. Or did he say I, A? I'm not sharing my stage with A. And what? Okay, that wishes. I mean, they're both terrible, but for right. that's uh, and and uh, he you know, he didn't give it give a damn if 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 Ice T was like the most you know famous person in the world. He did not want to give his stage up at the time because he didn't want to share it with a black person. And I'm like, dude, you're already sharing it with a few, you know, like Slash is black, I'm black, Tracy's black, you know. So. Um, you know that whole thing was so outrageous and as it turned out he did come ice t did come and join us you know for some of the tours so you know oxel was was not going to be affected by what james said and um i'm sure it's you know sl I, you know what the problem is i really think and i grew up with this personally i grew up in a predominantly white community um, I grew up in the Bronx in Co-op City, and I I had most of my 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 neighbors and schoolmates were Italian and Jewish. Now I think what made it easier for me was that my mother is Jewish, so therefore I am Jewish, right? And so I think that I was accepted into the Jewish community for sure because of that. And um, they were they made an exception for me. See, they were like, they would say the N word every single day. I heard it every single day from, from until the time I was about 18, right? When I actually told people to fuck off when they, <laughs> when they said that, you know? Um, but I heard it every day, whether it was directed at me or directed at somebody else. If it was directed at somebody else, they'd be like, oh, but not you. You're cool. We don't think of you that way, mm -hmm. you know? Like, but they, but they stopped to think long enough to know that they were insulting me you know what i mean so i i told you that because i wanted to let you know how i think slash felt or i mean i can't get into his head but maybe if you're used to growing up with that mentality around you you kind of you don't accept it but you you just like you know that's how it is and and uh you know whether what whether people have selective racism or not like i'm sure james didn't feel that slash was an yeah. M because slash you know to me slash looks more like a white boy than anything else because you know he's mr rock and roll and the way he talks and you know and i always had that around about you know people thought that about me you know like it if anything, I, I was not accepted in the black community because I was so light skinned and because of the way I speak and because of the music I sing. And, you know, like I had a lot of problems. I had racism from both sides, mm. you know? So I kind of, you know, and we were all really young. And so I think maybe, you know, James didn't feel that way about Slash or any of the people, you know, in that he was surrounded by. Maybe he didn't know that we were who the hell knows, right? But the fact that, you know, I think, the, you know, I've, I've had conversations with people who didn't know I was black and they pop out with the N word. And, and I'm like, guess what? Guess, get, get, you know, guess what? I'm black. And they're like, oh, oh, well, oh, I didn't mean you. I didn't, I, you know, so like, mm -hmm. I think, you know, at the time, maybe Axel thought that just because he wasn't talking about 
everybody, that he was trying to insult certain people, certain low life type of characters, yeah. that that word was directed towards him, them, that Axel doesn't think that he was being racist, mm -hmm. but that is the exact, you know, that's a, a, a pure example of what racism is, you know, the selective racism. Like you mm -hmm. think, you know, you, your one black friend doesn't apply to the N word, but you're going to call everybody else an N word. You know, you love Kobe and, you know, you have your one black friend over here, but, you know, everybody else is an N, you know? So huh. it, it's, it's, it's a really complicated subject, racism. And for somebody who, you know, you know I, I'm sure that we would have, be having a different conversation if I was, if my mother was black, if my father was black and my grandfather, you know, like if I just came, came, you know, like from a straight black, you know, family, uh, generations of, 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 you know, black people, you know, but because I have like all this European blood and, and I'm all mixed, you know, that we're having a different conversation because I could really, it's almost like being undercover. I, I, I was able to really sniff out real, the real racists, what I believe are the real racists who are the people who are like, I'm going to cover it up. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let people, let people know how racist I am. And then when they're, when their guard is down, guess what? Roberta is black. Hello. Busted. Cause I know how you really feel about us as a people. You know what I mean? I do. And there's so much to unpack there because you are right. And there are, when Axel would explain it and uh, how others explain it, and you know what, how I've explained it mm -hmm. uh, about myself. And, you know, I mentioned to, to bring some comedic relief at the moment, but when I talk about The Office, mm -hmm. you know, and, and if you're familiar with that show, uh, Michael Scott, the, the you know, played by Steve Carell or even David so Brent, in Washington, the yeah. UK, when, it's towards anybody when he makes a, right. you know, how uh, Stanley should, should know how to play basketball because he's black right. you know, or if he assumes things about gay people, he's, I was just watching the episode uh, where he burnt, burned his foot on a uh, George Foreman grill and he, that made him handicapped. <laughs> and I'm i uh, I'm a handicapped person. And it's so one thing I, 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 I see. That's, I think something that, it's that's where there's so many variables and you, maybe you can help me guide my thought here is intense in the person. So I, I told you a story off the air and I'll, I'll say it again here. I'm glad that uh, I was so young at the time. I don't want to say that I was kind of corrected with my thought process, but growing up, I lived right around the corner from school and walk home uh, from, from school and then, you know, get lunch in my, my mom would give me a tuna sandwich or a cheese sandwich um, in, in the kitchen while she would watch her soap operas. Mm. And a uh, side note, me and my brothers, my three younger brothers are all named after soap opera characters. Um, I'm Brandon Kingsley uh, uh, from one of Erica K Susan Lucci's boyfriends from that show Loving. Oh so this is how it, it, I grew up on soap operas. And obviously, you know, you, this is before the internet and this is, so you, you, TV is everything. And I, I'm a kid. I'm, it's on TV. I, I, you become invested in it and in the characters. And I knew about the quarter mains and all these things. Right. So did uh, I. Yeah. I, grew yeah, up I, was, I have it's just, I guess, yeah, I was dropping, name dropping the show that I actually did watch. But I, I remember there was a character on the show. I think he also was an actor on the Cosby show. Uh, but his character name in General Hospital, that was the main one that my mom watched all the time. Uh, it was a guy named. That was the one to watch, General Hospital. Yeah, yeah, that was where it was all at. <laughs> yeah, uh, his name was Justice, mm -hmm. and I still remember this. I had actually had to look it up the other day to make sure I did remember his name properly. And I, I guess he was a bad guy. I don't he was? Did he hang out with Patch? That okay? That now I'm not I, sure. I can't remember. I have, Patch I doesn't sound familiar, so I don't. That's know. The guy with the patch. Oh yeah! Oh, when he had like a the scar. That guy. Steve Johnson or something. Oh, I, 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 I can't. Oh, I but don't I, know. I, but I remember this scenario because it really changed my life. And I'm lucky that I have the parents uh, that I do or did. That's another story. 
Uh, so I guess he was a bad guy. I forgot like what the storyline was, whether he killed somebody or did something bad. And mm-hmm. he gets, it got me, it, there was an anger that emoted for me because he was hurting the characters that I liked. So I said, that's stupid. And I said the N-word. Mm-hmm. I was probably 11, 12 at the time. My mom really reacted to probably the way that a mom should react. She was horrified. Shut the TV off. Right. Where did you learn that word? You know, we don't say that word. I, I'm sure I, it was either on the playground. Um, Your schoolmates, mo- whatever. Could have mates, been, TV shows. A lot, you know? it, it was from somewhere. Yeah. And, and I'll say this because uh, it's still something that I, I still cut, try to control where I, I, I leave all my hate encased literally in a box is my car. It's very, that's why I'm glad I'm kind of in quarantine a little bit. I'm not now in traffic so much. Because I get mm-hmm. so angry. I'm, I'm an angry driver. Me too. Uh, <laughs> so growing up, my dad would say everything bad. He was a w- wonderful, wonderful man. He really was. But when he was driving, it was just like a beast. I think that – I don't know if that's a New York thing or, or, or what it is. I think it's and, a New York thing. I guess. But he would say – and he, he really did. Like, added, He loved everybody well, except for himself. That's how I am. He's like he, – there's no one he hated more than himself. And he was aware of that. And that's kind of how I, I mean, thankfully with therapy, I'm in a better place now, but that's kind of how I am. But that doesn't, doesn't excuse you from, obviously he passed something down, you know, like an anger down, not necessarily racism. He passed down just the anger. And right. me, I've had to try to figure out how to get that out in the proper ways. So when people, it's interesting when they say, if it's out of anger, if it's out of, then that's that i don't know how that still exists but what's so much that that needs to change i guess is just the people who don't understand that that there's there's still a problem even though you may not think you have an intent Mm -hmm. to hurt or you're careful with your words or i'm trying to get my my train of thought properly it's it's something needs to change and it's it's not just the people that are flat out racist it's not just the KKK. It, it's just there's a fundamental thing where. Oh, you, you cut out. I can't, I can't hear you. No. Oh, there you go. Oh, what do you? No. No, you, I'm gone? Yeah, you, you're here now. Okay. <laughs> what's going on? But you keep... I, I don't know what's going on. This will be an interesting episode considering the subject matter. Yeah. But I, I, what I was leading to was that it's the understanding of someone else's plight that is so important now. And when you say Black Lives Matter, you have to understand what someone else is going through and try to do your best to compare, to, to compare it to someone, how you would feel if the shoe was on, you know, if someone made fun of you yeah. or someone you know, grouped you, it's stereotype and grouped you into a certain place and how that would make you, you feel. And if that's been going on for years, and you're afraid to go out, you know, of what may happen to me, how you may be treated. It's just, it's a scary thought. It's just the only thing I can even compare it to that, like for me, is just being handicapped. Cause that I've, I've well, never, you really- have, you have people who are, are judging you for your handicap. Right. And that's probably the closest to what you're ever going to experience to racism right? Like real racism sure. by the color of your skin, right? Because, you know, you so, say how some people might not realize that, you know, if they look at you, they might not see that you're black. People, I think I'm surprised when people don't think I'm Jewish. I think I come off very Jewish, but I, I've never really experienced because anti-Semitism I mean, look, is out there. I, I yeah. come from two persecuted places. My, you know, know, my mother who is Jewish and my father who is black, right? And I understand that, but I think that, you know, walking around as a, a if I was just a Jewish woman, I, I would definitely not experience racism, especially on an everyday basis, the way I have, have been black. You and know? that's something that I've realized, because I know uh, that's something else too. People don't, when they see me, like I limp they don't always know I'm handicapped. And this is true, Roberta. I, I've had this, people think that I'm walking, quote unquote, black, like, cause I'm walking with some sort of stride, but no, that's my 
neurological condition. That's, you know, that's my muscle weakness. That's those are my leg braces. It's not just because I think I'm, that I'm cool. So I have to, just like you, how you like, you may not be black enough or you may not be white enough. I'm not handicapped enough. Mm. Cause I've actually been like rejected. I had a fight to get my handicap sticker for New York city. I'm like, I wear leg braces and use a cane, dude. Like, what are you, sorry, I'm not in uh I'm not coming in there like uh, Stephen Hawking. Mm-hmm. But, so that's the only thing I could think of. But I thought to myself, how much harder would it be if I was black and handicapped? Because mm-hmm. I have absolutely yelled at police officers who thought I was faking it. Mm-hmm. I've, gotten, yeah. I, I've gotten mad. And that yeah. would not have ended well at all. And I think that's what you, when you put up the, the black, for me, when I put up the, the black box, it was like, okay, I, I really need to understand, even though I... I'm disabled. Anti-Semitism, anti-Semitism is real. Uh, it could be, I don't know what, the, the, what they are going through. I don't know what that, it, it's just being aware mm-hmm. of, it's just being more self-aware and being more globally aware. That well, not, every- not, only, not only is it about being aware, you know, I mean, obviously it's about being aware, but what you said before kind of struck me where you have to like, Herb, look, look, talking about how your father would drive and be angry and say things like how you would have to think before you speak. You know, I think that the problem is that, you know, if you have to think before you speak, if you have to, if you have to watch your words, then your thinking is the thing that's fucked up. Yes. And, you know, you need to. And why do we think that way? Why, I guess. why why do you think that way you know i mean i i get your story we've we've talked off the air so we kind of come from the same hood you know i know how racist new york can be i, I you know i i grew up in the bronx and i before that i was in brooklyn and you know i understand that whole archie bunker mentality mm. i get it you know so when you're raised with that and that's all you see, and a lot of these people never get out of the neighborhood, if, if that's what you're growing up with and that's your life, it's a very small bubble, especially before the internet, you know, yeah. evolved, you know, so I understand how people can use those words and have those thoughts and think that it's absolutely okay or they might know that it's wrong, but you know, since it's not in their face, they, they, it, they're not gonna let it concern them. But now we're global. Now everybody has a cell phone. Now everybody sees what's going on. There's no more excuses. And I think this is really important to speak about, you know, and I'm glad that you actually approached me to, to speak about this because, you know, you, you, realize that you didn't come from the perfect place and that you want to you want to try to uplift your thoughts to a better place and to 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 see and try to understand you know and get the bigger picture and i i really respect that you're trying to do that you know um because right now we need to try to you know let the the world real see <laughs> Say I'm stuttering because I'm a, I get no, and I've been stuttering though. It, it, it is hard, and it's hard to, to as I'm. I guess I'm proving my point right now. Sometimes it's hard to articulate. Yeah, it's really hard and, to actually articulate, especially because for me at least, I get really passionate about this, and I have such deep seated anger and feel, thoughts of of feeling less than because of all the years that I was told that I was nothing because of what I was, because of the fact that I had a black father and a white mother who was Jewish, you know? So I, I, I've been told, you know, that I'm, I'm, I'm a piece of garbage basically by so many people, even the people who I thought were my friends who would you know, I'm believing that they're my friends and then they're going to go and say the N word and then say, no, no, but we don't mean you. (laughs) In that moment, I know what, what they think of me. Right. So this is how I've been thinking so much of my life. And, and, 
you know, and I always knew it was wrong. I've always known it was wrong. And now, you know, I, I guess I'm getting off of, I'm digressing, but like now, you know, there's really no reason and no excuse for people to have racism anymore. It's, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, and, you know, we're all born the same way out of a womb and we basically yeah. all come from one person, one person who, you know, we evolved from apes, you know, we evolved from monkeys and, and the first human being who was ever put on this planet, sorry, was African, right? So, but it doesn't matter. I mean, even if, if, if it was, you know, you know, whatever, um, it wouldn't matter because we're all it matter because we still all come from one little embryo, one little one little atom, you know. That's why and I so, don't subscribe too much. Uh, I, I, you know, we talk about being Jewish, and I'm, I'm. I don't know if you heard that music going by in my apartment. <laughs> I don't know we live near in, in a, a hospital, and also oh. I live in. We talk about different neighborhoods. I, I live in a very uh, uh, Hispanic neighborhood, so there's always a reggaeton blasting down my street. Mm -hmm. uh it's what made me really think about it and uh passionate because i i've grown up with this being an issue and i couldn't believe how um i i thought honestly i know people are gonna like it i i have very conservative listeners and some may shake their head when i say this i really thought like obama changed like the fact that we elected a black president things would change and it just really unearthed so much and then what's that's what's happening now and not to get political because this is just whether it's obama or trump it there's so many whatever president whatever timeline it's like it's always the same it's just history repeating itself with just mm -hmm. different names just different experience you know different events but the premise the the, the core is always the same so what my eye-opening thing was because obviously when i was that young i knew i had an issue i knew i had anger issues when i was 14 when i threw a uh, a playstation game at my brother tristan's face uh, i'm like i shouldn't be throwing a a, a disc in my brother's face cutting by his nose mm. mom dad i need to go to therapy what's wrong with me I'm trying to figure out my anger and i'm lucky i've been in therapy for like you know 10 or so years i, I believe at this point to try to figure myself out mm. uh and just the figure, thing you can do, actually. and to figure just the anger where's the anger coming from and I, and then a lot of that anger even though i never considered myself again like how i said like my dad was he hated nobody more than himself I would still be like the Michael Scott making jokes. And yes, I had a black friend or I'd, you know, date a, a woman who wasn't white or Jewish, but I would still maybe make a joke that then I'm watching Michael Scott say, and I'm cringing. Mm. And I can't just say that was the time mm. I have to. And then, and then I get that because it came out recently that Nikki six, he had some rant on stage in, in like the late nineties about something. The time is part of it. But since that time, what have you done? Because right. just like how we evolved as people, I think it's okay to emotionally evolve. It's one thing if like you, you tweet something racist and the next day you're apologizing. How much soul searching have you done in 24 hours to completely change your mindset? But what really rocked my world uh, was the loss of my dad to depression. So like I said, he hated uh, the person he hated himself, uh, the person he hated most was, was himself. And it's like, how can someone who seemed to have everything, you know, is this, uh, a dentist, uh, not to play into a stereotype, because I guess dentists have a high rate of suicide. And speaking really? of awkward, yeah, speaking of awkward, because you said how some people would say the N-word in front of you. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm my, my mom and like we all went to um, this group meeting, this group grieving meeting, and these people – came in and they're talking amongst themselves and they're talking about dentists having a high rate of suicide. And I'm just like, I felt bad for my brother because it's like, they're talking about our dad. They don't realize, you know, someone in this room may be like, have a dentist related to them. So anyway, it just seemed like he had everything. And like, why, how could he do that? And then when I, I have been trying to figure out his pain and related to mine and my family's, I see the pain that's out there happening now and people that, you, it's one thing if it's a, a battle inside your mind and you, you could try to go through therapy and fix it and, and talk to people. But if you think that you're stuck because solely because of the color of your skin, that's just, there's nothing you can do about it. 
Well, yes, you know, I mean, it, it, Brando, it it's, it's people. not thinking that you're stuck. It's, it's, it's being stuck because society thinks lesser of you, because society doesn't think you deserve the same jobs or the same pay or a better place to live or, you know, tr better treatment or the same you know, laws of, of, of protection, you know, all because of the color of your skin. It's, it's more, it's, it's deeper than that. It, it goes deeper than that. It's not just about how you feel like I have my issues because I'm, I, I, I think I have my issues because I, I come, I'm an interracial child. Right. Um, but I mean, the, the, it's a fact. The fact of the matter is Black and brown people are treated like crap because they are black and brown. And that's, that's as simple as it can get. That's the breakdown of it. And what you said about, you know, thinking that the, you know, we were, we were becoming a better society because Obama got into office. I felt the same way. I thought, oh my God, this is history. This is amazing. We have the first black president. This is wonderful. And it really did give me hope. But unfortunately, we are really suffering from a backlash of, or a white, <laughs> a white lash of, you know, having Obama, having a black man in, in the White House. And, you know, I, and I don't think that, it has anything to do with his policies. And I'm not even talking about his policies. I just see well, comments just like on social media, and word this, and word that. You cannot like him because he's a people are just racist against him. The racist of this of 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 the of the country did not like the fact that there was an N in the White <laughs> House. And that is that is a fact. Okay. And I feel that the Republican Party, especially, I I don't want to get too political, but you know, fuck Trump. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I think that, you know, the Republican Party got the most outrageous right wing person that they could find right they backed trump of all people who was the opposite of what obama was and they got him in office and what is he doing he's he's undoing all the good that broke down the cdc which is something that obama put together he put, he broke down the cdc cdc he he took away like I don't think, I think it was like 80% of the budgeting. And that's why America is suffering so much from the coronavirus right now, because he, he um, undid all the work that Obama, you know, did towards helping us through a pandemic situation, because he knew what was going to happen. If you research it, you can see that he knew that there was a pandemic in, in the horizon and, you know, it was eventually going to get to us, you know, and there was no doubt about that. And, you know, this is a, pre now we have a president who, who doesn't believe that, the, you know, it, he said the pandemic was a hoax. He said, you know, global warming is a hoax. And, you know, this is a guy who's undoing everything the black man did just for the point of saying, if you, if, if a black man says the sky is blue, a true racist is going to say, no, it's not, you know, it's, 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 it's purple, you know, just, so I really feel that Trump is just trying to undo everything Obama did because he's black and because, you know, he was for, you know, uplifting, you know, people of color and, 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 and the, 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 you know, the, 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 the amount of poverty in this country is horrible. And, you know, Trump is somebody who just wants to, to spread the wealth among the wealth. So anyway, that's my little political rant. But I think that, you know, this whole, this whole thing that's going on with Black Lives Matter is, is, is not new. It's something that's been going on for a really long time. And a lot of people aren't aware of it because they haven't experienced it and i'm saying i've experienced it all my life all my life it's never stopped it got better and people knew how to watch their tongues around me you know they knew how they they they, they knew to hold their tongue around me but the fact of the matter is when i when i go into a restaurant and i i don't get the same service as the other tables around me or if i go into a store and i get followed 
around like I'm going to steal something or, you know, like just little examples of that that happen to me on a daily basis because of the color of my skin. You know, I'm hyper aware of it. And just because you might not be aware of it because you don't have those experiences. Right doesn't mean that the, it doesn't exist and that, that, that we were getting so much better and we were, we were this country that, that wasn't racist anymore. The KKK was just laying low. But now <laughs> white supremacy is like on a rise because Trump said it was okay. He gave them a thumbs up. So, and, and I realize what I'm saying here is, is, is you know, I, I could get a lot of backlash for this because I understand that a lot of the GNR fan base might you know, think differently from what I'm saying and disagree with what I'm saying. But I, I think too bad. I think you that's, know, I'm glad you said that though, because it, it maybe was a year or so ago, Axel tweeted about that. He's like, I understand that we can't pick our fans because he's, he's dug in, uh, as you said. And my favorite, one of my favorite tweets from Axel was just simply fuck Nunez about Devin Nunez. He, he just tweeted fuck Nunez and he just made me mm-hmm. laugh because it's Axel Rose. So I, I get that point of it. And the same thing with me. I have listeners that don't want to uh, hear this part of it. or, And mm-hmm. I know I have listeners that are conservative. Uh, mm-hmm. There is a show uh, I work on for iHeart called The Buck Sexton Show. And Buck has interviewed Trump in the Oval Office. He, that's, but I'm able to, what I hope people are able to do is compartmentalize from the people, people and their experiences and your experiences and, and find that common ground. And I think that's the, that's the issue is that even if you may disagree with something or may not see it, <clears throat> that you can't uh, feel what that other person is feeling. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you could, I mean, definitely, there, you know, there's, you could have compassion for, for somebody that, you know, you can't, you know, you can't really know what an, another person is going through until you walk in their shoes, you know, but you can have empathy and you can understand and you, you can have, you can, you know, you can keep yourself from having blinders on. And I think that's really important. I think that's happening now that people are actually taking the blinders off and they're realizing, oh, damn, this really is a problem, you know? And I think that it's really important to discuss this. And I think that you know, I think it's it's kind of ironic that we're discussing this in front of the fan base, in, in front of the GNR fan base, because I realize, I know that most of the people that I saw that came to the concerts were, you know, Caucasian teenage boys. And, you know, some of these, some of these kids were like, sporting confederate flags and stuff you know so i i i understand that the you know this fan base might not want to hear what i have to say but i think it's important it is important and if i could if i could if i could change the thinking of of just like one person well obviously i would want to change the thinking of more than one person but i think that it's really important to like at least open people's eyes. And once once you, you tell a child that they're doing something wrong, from then out, if they do that same thing, they know they're doing something wrong, right? So if you tell somebody your way of thinking is wrong, you know, and you show them why, then there's no reason for them to, to keep that hatred for, for just for the reason of, of somebody's skin is a different color than theirs. That, of course, I mean, that, that is the ultimate. Like, I can understand on the most primitive level, like animals are like this, you know, when you see something that you, you've never seen before. You know, like when we, you know, when we got two extra cats in my apartment, mm-hmm. that the first cat that we got, oh, he, freak oh my God, I've never seen his tail get so fat. Yeah. Like, that's a defense mix. So I, I understand that. And you know what? Maybe there are other cats that would embrace new ones. So everyone is different. I get that at, at its core that maybe it's just something human that you, I don't want to say fear, but you may question it is something that's different. It is fear. You, that, that's you what, can let it become that's fear. That's where a lot of racism stems from. I think people who, who are fearful of what they don't know, what they're not comfortable with, especially people who live like, say, if you're 
from an all white community and you have never seen a black person, you know, for 26 years. And then on your 26th birthday, you finally see a black person and, you know, you act, you act out against it because I think it's fear. You just, the fear of the unknown of what you don't know. Sure. I see something different. I'm like, Oh, let's learn about this. Let's, you know, I'm curious. I want to, you know, I want to learn. Um, curi- but- oh, right. You can give into fear or if anything, if, if it's, it could be, it is a curiousness and you can react a couple of different ways. And I think it's people need, need to understand how to react. Like I've had to learn how to control my, how to react to anger, you know, how to react to certain things. So I, don't go off the rails or get sad or depressed. It's just how, how do you react to something? Mm. And I think that's what's so important and how I've been learning to react. And I, I don't preach, but I want people to react this way is just taking a breath and just maybe understanding, not just someone else's point of view, but yours. Be like, you know what? Why do I think this way? Mm. Where does this come from? Because it comes from somewhere. We don't come out of the womb. Right. You know, no one had to speak and right. build these so where does it come from? And, and that's why I, I don't lean towards any side, really. I, yeah, you, if you made a Venn diagram, maybe my stuff would be liberal, democratic, however you want to label it. But I like being a nothing. You know, I say I'm Jewish. I am Jewish. I was bar mitzvahed. You know, my family's, you know, mainly from Poland. Uh, but I'm not religious. Mm-hmm. It's because I just believe. I was a Hebrew school dropout, by the way. <laughs> I, my mom would not have let that happen. Oh, I think the, the, the rabbi I had growing up at, was at Temple Beth Torah in Oceanside, Long Island, was the rabbi in Rocky Three that buried Mickey. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I remember I was going to say that in my bar mitzvah speech, and he asked me to take it out. Oh remember that. <laughs> anyway, it's just – so that's what I've had to learn. Like, what, where does my perspective come from? That's, that's where I wanted to go with – to bring everything around with one in a million with his perspective. But what you said was also very true in listening to his interviews is just because you say, I'm not talking about all black people. Right. It doesn't matter. I don't think it matters because. Collective racism, that's racism. And I you think know, it. Especially the way he was backpedaling in those, in those, in those um, interviews. After you, after you approached me about doing an interview with you specifically about GNR and one in a million, I did some research and I looked at some old videos, some interviews. I did, I, I listened to audio rants of him during concerts and stuff. And, you know, I think Axel's, like I said, I'm going to say this again. Axel was always really super sweet to me and I never got a racist vibe from him. Um, however, I think that, he, you know, he came from you know, this little town in Indiana and, you know, is a racist little community. And he probably didn't hang out with a lot of black people. And he probably had, you saw black people, you know, in in one little area and he, and, and people had their way, their small town way of, of thinking. And that's where the racism probably stemmed from. And when he got to LA and he saw, you know, LA, Hollywood is sleazy and there's a lot of sleazy people there. And, and he saw black people. Do you hear the ambulance? That's fine. <laughs> and he, he saw, you know, the, his first experience getting off the bus. And this is true. This is what he, I found out that this is the, what he wrote about. One in a million was his experience getting off the bus, you know, getting into LA and being, um, you know, a, totally like, overwhelmed by shock. these people who were like trying to sell gold chains to him and blah, 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 yeah. and crack addicts and everything. And, you know, Hollywood is, is the, is a shithole. Sorry. But you know, it, and yeah, he was almost that. raped by a gay guy and that's why, right. you know, so like he has this, this whole preconception of so that's well, what they hate my gay from. man tried to rape me. So all gay people are bad. You know, this, this, this one brother tried to, to sell me, you know, a, cheap chain so then the, all 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 black people are bad you know so he had this like this this opinion this of these low life people and he clumped them in to certain groups and that's what he thought and that's what he thought at the time and i'm not excusing him you know i understand why he thought that 
because I, I grew up with those kinds of people and I understand where they're coming from, but there's no excuse to, to be that way. There really isn't. And especially when you're in a band with a couple of white guys and a black guy, and they're all telling you, you really should rethink this before you publish this. And I know for a fact that both, you know, Slash and Duff had it out with him. Uh, Izzy had it out with him about the song. They all really thought that he should not do this song. And, and as it turned out, they didn't, they didn't perform it. And when I was working with them, we never performed it. So, you know, I, I thought, I thought that that was a thing of the past. And, and they left it off the box set. So they know some of it. They wrong. left it off the box set because they knew that it was controversial and, and not only controversial, but they knew that it was wrong, you know, and I'm hoping I'm, if Axel ever hears this, you know, I'm, I'm hoping that he, 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 he's had a long think about it and he, he realizes that he was young and he came from this mentality and I hope he's outgrown that mentality and I hope that he's learned from that experience and I hope that he he realizes that you can't be a selective racist you know you can't you can't call a certain group of people you know horrible names because you you had an experience with a small set of people from that group because that whole group is going to react even though you only mean like one or two people perhaps it's selective race. every everyone is going to react to exactly. that word. And exactly. they're all going to be hurt by that word. Don't say the N-word in front of me. Don't. And they, you know, and they all don't. have. <laughs> it, yeah, because you all have an experience with that word. And even though because you're not directing it at that one person, that you, you're directing it, if whoever hears it is going to. It's, it's an insult something. to anybody. I it's understand just, that. Is no, there something. I don't care if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're directing it to a certain person, that, to one person that hurt you, by you saying that is hurting me too. You know? I understand that. And is it, there... it, it's wrong. It's wrong. And I, I, I think that, um, you know, that song was controversial for a reason. And, there, and that song wasn't performed for a reason, you know. And but when I hear Axel's interviews of, of him trying to defend why he wrote it, and, you know, it's really uncomfortable. It's just, it's like beyond Michael Scott. You know what I mean? It's not funny. It's like, oh my God, Axel, shut up. Just stop, just stop, just stop, shut up, you know? So, you know, and when, when I heard him, like, when, when I heard the audios of his, him ranting, you know, defending the song, it's like, oh my God, like, he's need, he needs to learn, you know? And, and, and I, that was, I, yeah, I hope you, you hope because it was so many years ago, but even I was like, that word comes too freely. Yeah. And it, it, because everybody was using it too, you know, like from where, at least where I was growing up, everybody was using that word. Well, it and, was in music. And I mean, for me in my era, it was, uh, it's funny because it was even brought up in the office, but there are certain like Chris Rock skits, you know, uh -huh. and I think it's, 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 it's time and place. And I think it's, again, there's never, so many. I never condone that word. I never condone that word. I don't anybody. care. Using it. I don't care if, you know, if you're a rapper using it, I think it's offensive. I think it, it, it just keeps black people down. And I don't think the word should be used. You know, it, 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 it there's too much that's attached to that word, you know, where you, so much is attached to that word that you cannot use that word and, and not think of, you know, right. racism. You know, I'm sorry. So when another a black person uses it, you know, as a as a greeting or something, I'm like, no, uh -uh. It, it just it, that that word turns my stomach. And and, you know, I just I, I just don't think it should ever be used by anybody. Is there something and I'm not asking you to uh, tell Axel to do something or slash to just do something. But do you think a musician or an artist at that level is responsible you know maybe he's not being called out like uh now mark Wahlberg, his his past hate crimes when he was literal hate crimes he did when he was like 15 years old he's he's pushing 50 you know I, i'd like to think he's a different person i'd like to think so too and i'm really hoping he is 
Is there a responsibility, you think, to talk about it now? And, and it's not to make it a part of the apology culture, not to apologize necessarily, but to- Not, not, for the, not, not to backpedal and, and, and try to make yourself look better. You know, it's, it's to talk about, okay, this is what my thought process was, and this is, why it's, this is how it's changed. And I think that's the only way think we are going to change is mm-hmm. because we, we, we admit our own thought process and where it came from and why that thought process may be wrong. And we've been dealing with it our entire right. life, and people are uncomfortable with that. I, think I definitely like, think that, that, you know, that's why I'm, that's why I'm here now. <laughs> like I said, I, you know, it, might co- it might cost me work. By speaking out, especially what I told you about James, what I heard, I heard it with my own ears. Well, you know, you know I hope James. You're is. not supposed to, you know, you're not supposed to talk, you know, about things that happen in the music. You know, like what what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, well, right? So, been, I mean, they, they, I told you this off the air, and if you want, I can send you. Uh, you know, I know people who have copies of Matt Sorum's book. He just there's, yeah. there's no bridge left. It's completely burnt. Right, but like you know, he's Matt Sorum. You know. I'm not, you know, I, I'm, I, 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 uh, I still get hired to do, you know what I mean? I still have to work, you know? Understand. So I'm, I'm not a mega millionaire, but um, I mean, like I said, this, you know, speaking out like this and what I've said will, it could possibly cost me jobs, but I think it's just too important to, to, to be, not to be silent. You can't be silent right now. I, I feel like it, it, things must be said because especially in this industry, there's a lot of racism, you know, and, and a lot of sexism. And I mean, that goes without saying, but. I think it's, I, we got to end the isms part of it. We got to. Yeah, yeah. We're there's all part of this, of this giant there's a planet. a lot of isms and it needs it needs to stop. It needs to stop. And, you know, it's... Because people are getting killed and people, people are, are kill, killing people themselves. People have been getting killed. People have been getting killed. They're just, they just happen to be getting caught on tape now. Okay? So, you know, know, this... this this I think, you know, it's one thing to apologize because it's the right thing to do or you have to protect your reputation and, you know, ooh, I said something that I shouldn't have. Oh, no, it's going to hurt my reputation or, you know, it's going to hurt my, my fan base. Or like whatever. Drew Brees changed his, his uh, thoughts in like a day. Yeah, yeah you, can't, you can't. Oh, I realized the error of my ways. You can't do that. If you said something, if you blurted something out, then that's the way you feel. And if you It's a therapy thing. You got to figure out. Yeah, exactly. So, like, I think that now is the time where people really need to rethink and reset and and um, open their eyes and open their ears because people are dying. The police department has always targeted people of color and they, and, you know, uh, it has to stop. It has to end. And unfortunately, you know, you know, the thing with, you know, the thing that happened with uh, George Floyd and, you know, mm. so many people, it, it's, 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 it's disgraceful. And, you know, like I said, the only difference now is that people are getting caught on tape and mm. police brutality is something that people said, oh yeah, that doesn't really happen. But now that it's getting caught on tape, people are seeing the truth. And it's it it just has to stop. And people yeah. of all colors are are getting hurt and dying. You know, well, it's, 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 people who are who are, you know, well now protesting, but it's like it's crazy. justice, you know. But like in in the sixties, they they had a name for the people who defended black people, and it wasn't a nice name. Yeah. So um, you well, know, I learned a lot because I'm I'm thinking because I was like, it's, I, I excused one in a million. Even though it made me like uncomfortable a little bit, and I love this list, the structure of a song. I think it's a beautifully written, other than the words, just like the way it, fl- the way it sounds, other than like those words. If you know what I mean, mm. I guess like if it had different <laughs> lyrics, I think it would have been a hit. If I, I, I don't know about that, I, I don't know about that. I wouldn't go that far, but um, uh, I lo- there are G- you're G- a fan. G- you're a fan. You're a true GNR fan. I just I, you know, I I I. I I'm not saying that I hated their music or anything, but I, I enjoyed the time, the, the t- like it wasn't making my ears bleed or anything, listening to the same, you know, the, the, the music every night, you know, I was enjoying myself, but that doesn't make me a fan. You know what well, I mean? I know what you mean. 
I wouldn't go home and listen to them. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So, but I was I'm talking about one in a million is, is one of their better songs. And, and I'm not <laughs> just saying that because of the lyrics. I'm saying that because it's just, I don't think it's such a great song. Um, but and that's fine. <laughs> that's fine. You know? So, you know, I, I Welcome guess to the Jungle is a way better song. And I think Welcome to the Jungle, one, of, one in a million is basically Axel's version of Welcome to the Jungle, you know? Mm. And I think that he could have just left it at Welcome to the Jungle. But he Interesting. wrote that after One in a Million, right? One in a Million was written before Welcome to the Jungle. So maybe he rephrased or whatever. Maybe I'm wrong. But, um, but I, I hear what you're saying. And that's yeah. interesting. I guess because I, I may, it's something I've had to come to terms with because it's like, you know, something you love and you don't want to admit that there was something wrong with it. Right. But even if it's about yourself, right. oh, this has been wrong with me my entire life. Right. Oh, there was stuff with my dad. Or or G and R, or, you know, Axe or whatever. Yeah. I looked at it as like it's like a Tarantino movie. He's just using strong language, but Tarantino has problems also. So it's just something that I need to realize. Just because it's in pop culture, it's in a movie that makes me laugh. It's it's mm-hmm. it doesn't make it right. And it's a t- again, it's a time and place to have certain discussions or have you know maybe there are some words that don't need to be said. Like why do you need to say these words? Listen. You, you, you brought up a point, the Tarantino movies of, of him saying, repeating that word so many times, like in Django, oh my God, the word was used so much. And that there's going to be audience members viewing the film and saying, and saying, oh, that's so offensive. And him saying that over and over, it's really hitting home. It's, he's, he's making a point by using that word over and over. And then there's going to be some people that are like, yeah, that's right. That's right, and agree with it. And I think that's, that's what happened with One in a Million. And that's another reason why it became such a controversial song, because um, a lot of people, like me at the time, thought, eh, he's just, he's just voicing the, the opinion of white racist America, right? And there were a lot of people who actually used it as their anthem. Yeah. And it, it has- was KK. And they were like, yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's, that's, that's what these people are. And, and, you know, the fact that it was even associated with the KKK, right then and there, Axel should have been like, I'm pulling this song. I, that's not what I meant. Fuck this. I'm not doing this. And he didn't, he didn't go there. And that was his opportunity to step up and do the right thing. And he didn't because I think his ego got in the way and he, he, he needed to to make his point you know he's like i'm not a racist and that song didn't i don't want that song to be an anthem for the kkk but i'm not pulling the song so you know i think that now years later i would hope i hope to god he sees the error of his ways and the error of, of his of his thinking and his mindset and i i really hope he doesn't feel that way anymore you know, just for his own sake, because, you know, it's harboring hatred, you know, and um, it, it's really, I, I like, I, mean, I like to think so. I'm not going to pretend like I know firsthand, but it just seems like he's a different guy uh, just from the public eye. You know? I haven't spoken to him for, for yeah. years and years and years, and, and I don't really know much about him. I like, I said, I don't follow those guys. You know, I just know that, you know, they're touring, whatever. And especially after this, I certainly won't be asked to do the tour. <laughs> I know for a fact. But, you know, it's like, you know, I think these, these are, it's an important thing. And I, I think this is the time to not be quiet. And, um, Understood. you know, I just think that, you know, if, if you have an opportunity to do the right thing, then you should do the right thing. Even if, even if it's not in your best personal interest, I think you should do the right thing. And that's what I was really trying to do today with this, this episode, because I know it may turn some of my listeners off. I know there are listeners when I posted about this upcoming conversation that were thanking me and very excited to have. Mm-hmm. So uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll, we'll yeah. see. You know, obviously, uh, you know, it's a pipe dream. I would love to interview Axel Rose one day. I doubt this is going to be the, the it would the, be a great interview if you interviewed him and, and talked to him about this. And I, but I'm oh. saying like my point being, I doubt because a, I doubt it's going to ever happen. But like, <laughs> this conversation with you is going to be the reason why that never happens. 
But point being, it's like I needed, I wanted to talk about, it's, it's something I needed to talk about. You know, it's like I'm watching the news, I'm talking with my girlfriend about it. She's awesome. She goes to protests. Uh, mm-hmm. You were saying how creative you, uh, you are. She just went to a, a chalk uh, protest, I think, uh, yesterday. A right? chalk was, protest? Yeah, just for, you know, writing uh, like sidewalk chalk. Okay. And you're, and you're just writing all over the you know, people's names mm-hmm. and Black mm-hmm. Lives Matter. And you're just, you know, you're making, uh, you know, right. pretty chalk everywhere, but just doing right. peaceful, peaceful right. protests. Right. So she's, she's been to a couple protests, That's you know, good. wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to talk to talk to you. Because I know you were, um, I saw it affecting you. I see it affecting some of my friends on, on Facebook yeah. and I saw it affecting you. And it's like, yeah. I can just sit back and kind of just feel bad for my friends mm-hmm. or can I have a conversation and maybe, I don't know, talk through it and maybe yeah. make us all I think, fun. Yeah. I think, you know, this is being pro, pro well, you know, I mean, like you're not protesting in the street, you know, but I think this is important to you intend to put this on live air, right? Sure. Right? So, <laughs> hopefully. I may do the, uh, I may just do the, we'll see how the video looks once I buy a press stop. I may just do the audio. We'll see what happens. Not, whatever. It needs to be said. <laughs> it, it needs to be said. Oh, yeah. And, um, I just, I just think it's really important. And I think that if, you know, I, I understand that this is happening in an age of, uh, where we ha- we're having an unprecedented health issue and, you know, pe- people might be too afraid to, uh, to get out into the streets and protest. There's so many other ways of, of, of showing your support. You could call the police department. You could, you could call the governor and the mayor and, and, and write letters and, and, you know, re, you know, have a demonstration. You, you could boycott businesses who are, who are uh, against the Black Lives Matter movement. You could boycott Chick-fil-A, who's a, a real big supporter of Trump. You could boycott Home Depot, you know, who's a, 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 who just gave $7 million to Trump and, and the administration. I mean, there's a lot of things that you can do in support of Black Lives Matter, just because you might not be able to get out into the street, you know, if, if, if you have health issues or, if, you know, whatever, whatever reason you have, there's so many different avenues in which you can, you can make a difference and, and make the, the thing that we need to do is, is, you know, change laws and change the government and change people's way of thinking, you know, and by you doing this podcast, I think that that's, that that's your way of doing it, you know, and I, I think that there's a lot of people speaking out against it. And, and, um, you know, there's, there's so many different ways that you could be active in sure. this. And I think just mo- changing most- your thinking is the first thing. I was need. about to say that. That's, I think, the most important thing. Even if you don't do anything public, mm-hmm. you, gotta, you have to really think about how you think. Right. Yeah. Right. You know? Well, uh, I, I'm certainly thinking uh, a lot of stuff right now. But the, the first and foremost is I'm just thinking, like, you're, you're just awesome, Roberta. I really appreciate oh. you. You know, again, just, just giving me your, your, not just your time, but your, I don't know, because you're really opening up your heart. And, and I know this was a sore subject. Uh, for you, so I appreciate you, you know, conversing with me today uh, about it, and 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 hopefully people can take uh, something out of this and learn of just not how what they can do going forward, but just maybe reflect on how they have led lives so far. And it's not even, you know, I don't want to put out there like you should feel like there's a guilt, or you should feel bad. I think it's like it's just the, again being self-aware of. And then just changing the. Well, change. no, people should feel bad. <laughs> Some people, yes. They should Some feel bad if they've if they've meet, mistreated somebody on on the basis of their the color of their skin. You know. I guess um, I have the approach of like if you if you're totally ignorant and you mm-hmm. really don't mean anything, like it's like again a Michael Scott thing. I don't want to go in there right. and just start shaming you. It's like, right. hey, you know what? This is this isn't right. You know, let's start thinking this way now. It's right. like, oh, okay, you know what? I didn't know that before. I try right. to go in there with that approach instead of just, you yeah. know, yelling at everybody. I like to believe. I know Michael Scott isn't a real person, but I, I would like to believe if you if you laid it out for him, he 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 probably would be like, really? Oh my god! Oh, <laughs> that like you know, and I know exactly. that there are people out there that really have a good heart and really good intentions, and you know, because of where they 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 came up from, you know, 
they they're, they're surrounded by it and they don't know any different, you know, but I think once you open your eyes and, and you are shown the truth, there's no turning back. No turning back unless you want to listen to this episode again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, thank you, Roberta. Um, I guess that does it for this episode of Appetite for Distortion. When will you see the next one? Well, in the words of Axel Rose, not with one in a million, but concerning Chinese democracy, I don't know if soon is the word, but you'll see it.